Hello, welcome to Algebra 1. We're going to talk about uh, powers of monomials, and that means when you have a monomial and you raise the entire thing to a power. So I need to kind of explain the rule involved, and then we'll do a bunch of problems to kind of get practice with that rule. So it's not a hard thing to do, but we do have to go over a few things. So what if you had, for instance, a to the fourth power, and that's a monomial, very simple monomial, and then you raise the entire thing to the third power. Have you ever seen anything like that before? What it means is this third power here applies to everything inside. So what this basically means is you have a to the fourth power times a to the fourth power times a to the fourth power. So we're multiplying everything inside of here by itself three times because the exponent is three. But you also know from the last section, you know how to simplify this. The bases are the same, and we can just add the exponents, right? So 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. So this basically comes down to a to the 12th power. So when you have a monomial, which means powers, and then you're raising it to a power, then effectively look what's happening here. 3 times 4 is 12. So um, here, uh, 3 times 4 is equal to 12, which is the power of the final answer, right? So the rule that you really follow, okay, that I could have just kind of shown you right away, but basically the rule is some uh, either variable or number a to the power of something, we'll call it m, and you raise the entire thing to the nth power is equal to a time to the power of m times n. All this is telling you is if you have a monomial and you raise it to a power, then it's the same base, and you multiply these two things, m times n. That's what that is, m times n. And you, um, that's going to be the new exponent, essentially. So you can kind of think of this as distributing this 3n to the power and multiplying like that. Now, there's one sim similar guy that I want to show you. Uh, so I put and, because you're going to run into this all the time. I'm not going to prove it to you, but if you have something like ab to the power of m, then what it comes out to be is a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So this is, these are the rules that you're going to follow. And let me explain the second one. What it means is, you know how these, um, these monomials oftentimes have lots of variables multiplied together? If you raise the whole thing to a power, the m gets distributed as a power into this term, giving you this one, and it gets distributed into this term, giving you this one. So you can kind of think of this rule of powers raised to another power as kind of like a distribution rule, kind of like we had for the distributive property before. It gets multiplied in times every exponent here, and that's what this is trying to tell you. Now, I can talk about this all day long, but really we need to do some examples to kind of solidify it and show you what I'm talking about. So for instance, if you have 2 times x and you're raising it all to the power of 3, now this might look a little funny because I have a, b here, but a and b can be anything. They can be numbers or variables. What it basically means is that this 3 is going to get distributed in to each one of these guys. Now if you were going to write it out uh, fully, the way you would write it out would be 2x times 2x times 2x. Now how would you do that? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so what you would get is 8 and then what you have is x times x times x. You add the exponents together, giving you x to the third power. This is the answer, and this is the way you would do it if you wrote it all out. But what's really happening, if, if you follow the rule, is the 2 is raised to the 3 power, and also the x is raised to the 3 power. So what's happening is this 3 is getting distributed into the 2 as a power, and into the x as a separate power. Now 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8x to the third. I'm just showing you that you get the same answer either way. If you write it all out and do the multiplication and add the exponents, you get this. And if you apply the rule, which means the exponent gets applied to everything inside, you get exactly the same answer. That's all I'm trying to show you. In reality, you don't really write all this stuff out all the time. You just kind of apply the rule every time. And that's what we're going to be doing uh, as we move along here. What if you have a to the fifth power times, or I shouldn't say times, raised to the power of two? So it's a power raised to a power. So the 2 gets distributed in and multiplied by any other exponents there. So it's a to the power of what's 5 times 2? 10. a to the power of 10. Simple as that. Final answer. Okay? Now for comparison, let me show you what would happen. What if you had, just to kind of compare it, just to show you how it's different, what if you have a to the power of 5 times a to the power of 2? 
See, this is, this is what we did in the last section, where we have the same base, and we're multiplying these together, you add the exponent. So what you get is a to the power of 7. You need to make sure you understand the difference between these two cases. Here we're multiplying two monomials together, and we're adding the exponents. Here we're taking a monomial, and we're raising it to a power. So in that case, you multiply the exponents, uh, doing that. And in the previous case, we do what we've always done before, which is simply add them together. If it seems confusing, it will get better as we work a couple of problems. What if we have um, negative 4 times c raised to the power of 3? Okay, how do we handle that? Well, we have a number or an object inside, and we have another variable, so we raise everything to the power of 3. So the way you write it is negative 4, raise that to the power of 3, and then you have times c, and you raise that to the power of 3. So that's the final that is the answer, but in order to get this, you have to say negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. It's easier to do that when you write it out. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, and it's going to be c cubed. The answer, or the, the answer to the question is going to boil down to what is this? Well, start with the first two numbers. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to give you positive 16. All right, And then when you take this uh, positive 16 here and multiply by negative 4, you're going to get negative 64 because negative times positive is, is going to give you negative 64 c cubed. So you see what you're doing is you're taking this exponent, distributing in as a power to this quantity, this whole quantity here, and then you're also doing it uh, to the variable as well. Let's do one more and we'll call it a day for this lesson. What if we have 4 k squared, and we're raising the whole thing to the power of 3. So again, we have a monomial. We need to distribute the exponent into each term, multiplying exponents along the way. So what you're going to have is 4 to the power of 3 okay, times k to the power of what? 3 times 2 is 6. Now, what is 4 to the power of 3? You need to figure that out. 4 times 4 times 4, and then we have k to the 6th power. Now, it's the same numbers as before. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So it's positive 64k to the 6th power. And that is the final answer. So again, the rule is when you have some kind of power going on, a monomial, even with multiple terms with power, multiple objects inside with different exponents, you just take the exponent and you distribute it to every entity inside, multiplying exponents along the way. Now follow me on to the next lesson after you've mastered this. Make sure you understand it. Follow me on. We're going to get tons of examples with this um, to make sure you understand it.